We're back having a no-holds-barred conversation about the suicide epidemic in our country. Kevin Hines is a suicide survivor who some call a living, breathing miracle. My name is Kevin Hines, and this is my story. It was 10 in the morning on September 25th when I got to the bridge. And I was there to die. Is something wrong? Or can I help you? Those were the words that I desperately wanted to hear as I stood atop the Golden Gate Bridge walkway right before I catapulted myself over the rail. So what, what happened when you hit the water? The, the fact that you're even here seems to be a miracle. The doctor said that had I not played football in the months prior, uh, I probably would have died. And in the water, I hit that water and, and Doc, the 38 people who have survived this fall have all hit in the same way. We don't want to talk about that. We don't want to give people ideas, but they've all hit in the exact same way. The impact reverberated through my legs. It shattered my T12, L1, L2. You know it you know, it's nearly severed my spinal cord. I went down 70 feet beneath the water's surface because when you hit that from that height at that speed, you're going 75 miles an hour. It's a four-second fall. When you hit, a vacuum sucks you under 70 feet. And then I opened my eyes, and all I wanted to do was live. And I swam frantically, only using my arms, 70 feet in one breath. It was the fastest ever swim in my life. And I got to the surface, I broke the surface, and I bobbed up and down in the water, and I prayed, God, please save me. I don't want to die. I made a mistake on repeat. And I, I believe you heard me, because at that moment, something began to circle beneath me, something large and slimy and very alive. And I thought it was a shark. I thought, oh, you got to be kidding me. I didn't die off the Golden Gate Bridge, and this shark is going to eat me. And, um, <laughs> and it didn't bite me. It just circled faster and faster. And Doc, I was... I was no longer waiting to stay afloat. I'm lying afloat on my, on my back atop the water, being kept buoyant by this thing, thinking that it's a nice shark. What was it? A man wrote it into ABC when I was on there and wrote into the show, a man named Morgan said, Kevin, I was standing next to you when you jumped. It's haunted me until this day. No one would tell me whether you lived or died. There was no shark, Kevin, but there was a sea lion. And the people above looking down believed to be keeping your body afloat until the Coast Guard boat arrived behind you. And how did the Coast Guard get there so quickly? A woman driving by in a red car had a car phone, and she called her friend in the Coast Guard who was manning the waters of that bridge at that moment. His unit approached me in the water minutes before I was to set in hypothermia and drown. And at the hospital dock, I was leaving the hospital when one of the foremost... I, I was entering the hospital, pardon me. I was entering the hospital when one of the foremost back surgeons on the West Coast was, was leaving and he opted to stay. And he did a surgery that is in a medical journal, the first of his particular kind. He went through a 23 staple scar across my left side. I uh, pulled out my organs, put it on my chest, and he went to work with a scalpel and some tools. And they removed the shattered pieces of vertebrae, meshed them into a paste, took a three inch piece of my 10th rib, did the same, put a cylindrical titanium cage of mesh wiring around it, four pins the size of my index finger, a metal plate the size of my palm to my left side. The singular reason I get the honor and privilege to stay and walk and run. So why? Why all these miracles? Why the miracle of hitting the water the right way, getting back up to the surface without a lethal injury, having a sea lion bob you up, Coast Guard gets there within minutes of you dying of hypothermia because the wife of the, the captain is driving by coincidentally, and then you get the world-class neurosurgeon to put the pieces back together. Why these miracles? I believe I was meant to be here to share my story so that I can help people all over the world of every age find the ability to stay, to never die by their hands, and to recognize their inner resilience, because resilience, Doc, is what evades us from suicide. When we have a lack of resilience, we lose life. That is why we are losing teenagers now. More teens die by suicide today than heart disease, AIDS, birth defects, pneumonia, the flu, cancer, and lung disease combined. And that is a travesty. And when is our government going to fully fund brain, mind, behavioral health, spiritual health, mental well-being, and suicide prevention like we actually matter? Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss out on new videos to live the good life.